Okay, so um, we'll start cross-legged on your mat in Sukhasana, on a block or a cushion if you want to bring yourself up a little bit or make something a little bit more comfortable, a bit more padding. Um, but just have a wriggle around in your sit bones until you feel comfortable, until you feel that pelvic bowl has settled into a sort of equilibrium. So it's it's neither tipping back or tipping forward, your pelvis. It's like a, I always think it's like a washing up bowl, but a sort of bowl shape so that it's sitting, if any fluid was in there, it would be sitting nice and flat in the top. And then from there, find your spine. Don't try and get rid of any curves in it. Just try and draw your tummy in and lift out of your pelvis a little bit. So you'll still have a slight curve perhaps, or a big curve even in the back of your, lower back like I have, but we don't want to get rid of that. That's the way you're made. But by drawing the tummy in, it just supports that area because it can be quite uncomfortable otherwise. So, and then we want to think about lifting up through the spine a little bit further, drawing the shoulders back, tucking the chin, finding that long back of neck, reaching up through the crown. And then inhale and just exhale and soften about 30%. Let everything just sink back down towards those sit bones. So we're just going to take a very easy breath practice this morning. We're thinking about the three, three part breath that we do, but rather than putting our hands all over our body, we're going to use our arms moving up and down to work with the three parts. So it will be breathing in one, two, three. And as you breathe in the first part, we're thinking of drawing the breath to the upper chest. The second part is to your ribs and the third part is right down towards the belly where the diaphragm pushes down into that area. Um, there's no stops in it. It's just a continual breath. So don't get panicky about stopping after one, two, three. Um, just, it's just a count of three on the, and the breath on the count of three rather. So we inhale up on three and then we exhale down, full exhale, no counting particularly. Okay, so when you're ready, inhale, first part, inhale, second part, inhale, continue your inhale till you're full right up to the top, tip the fingers together, rotate the hands, draw the energy down as you exhale out. Again, inhale. So thinking about the three parts as you take the three points, come up to three to full, turn the palms, exhale, nice and long and slow the exhale. We're not rushing it. We're taking the same length up and down. So inhale, upper chest. Inhale into your ribs, feel them swell. Inhale into your belly, feel it swell. Come up to the top, exhale, back down. So continue like that. And as you take it into the upper chest, think about the back of the body now. As it goes to the ribs, think about moving the ribs on the back of the body. As it comes down to the belly, think about moving it round the side of your waist as well and into your back. Exhale, let it all come back out. Let yourself sink down towards your sit bones. Take two more on your own, just concentrating. I'm trying to get that 360 degree feeling as you bring the breath in, as well as moving it down, you want to move it out and round your body. One more. And release the arms down to the side. And relax, let your shoulders soften a little bit more. Find that tummy again, draw it in to support the lower back. I'm going to take our three movements through the neck to just put a little neck stretch in. So all these are very familiar to us this morning and that's the point of it. It's a really nice thing to start the week with familiar things. Some of you might not remember doing them, but we have. So we're going to take our right hand and we're going to take the palm of the hand and place it just around the other side of the crown, in the centre of your head. Don't press, just weight of the arm sort of rests there. So your neck is still nice and long and tall and straight and in neutral. So inhale up and as you exhale, just allow the right ear to fall towards your right shoulder. Don't go too far. Just let the weight of the arm be there rather than pulling. Stop there. Take a couple of breaths here. Noticing where the stretch is moving into in the outside of your left side of your neck. Probably quite central feeling in towards your shoulder. 
and then slide the hand back to the back of the crown so just move it backwards to the back of the head same thing don't force don't pull just let the weight be there find your breath again just stay here right right ear still over to right shoulder just notice then where the movement has gone into where the stretch has moved to this is a really good stretch for those of you that work at desks or do your computers. So I've got my left hand on my left thigh, just as a bit of extra support, but it's, it's dropping. I'm not holding on to that left shoulder. And then slide your hand forward to the front of your, um, that side of your skull. Any of these that feel too uncomfortable, just draw up a little bit from your ear being over to your shoulder. So again, breathing in this position and just noticing where the stretch has moved into now. Maybe one part of your neck felt that it was uh, really in messages more than the other there. So it may just be where you're tighter or tenser, but be aware of that. And then still with the ear over to that side, slide the hand down to the other side of the head and use the hand just to guide the head back up to central. Take the weight in the hand, in other words. Let your right arm come down, rest it on your knee or your thigh. Eyes still closed. Notice the difference between the two sides. The one side may not be sending any messages yet. So we're gonna go the other way now. So very carefully, inhale, find that long neck. Take your left ear gently over towards your left shoulder. Take it really slowly because you've been working on that side of the neck. And then take your left arm and into the middle again so that your middle finger is roughly pointing towards your ear. Take the weight gently there, but don't force, remember, and just hold. Let the left, uh, right shoulder, sorry, just drop down away from your ear. Start extending through the right side now. It may be slightly different. Watch that your head hasn't rolled forward, that your upper back hasn't let you roll. Try and keep that nice long neutral spine. So roll back up to neutral if you have. And then slide the hand to the back of the head. Just notice the difference where the, move, where the um, stretch moves into. Again, it might be different on this side to the other side. My right side's hardly feeling it, my left side did. So it may be that you're much looser on one side. Your tension may run down one side of your body. And it's good to be aware of these things. And then slide the hand forward to the front of the head. Again, it moves forward then more into the front of the neck and then towards the throat area. Huge amount of muscle power goes into this area of you because to hold that big head up all day and let it move around, it takes a lot of strength, but that's also a lot of tension moving in. So then move the hand over to the left side of the head, guide up carefully, much more useful on that side in my case, but might be different for you. Pop the hands back down to the knee, close the eyes, notice the difference. And then open your eyes. If you feel you want to at this point, recross your legs in the other way or have a shake out if you need to. Okay, so we're now going to take some side bends, but we're going to hold after the third one on each side for a few breaths. So use your left hand here, um, oh, sorry, your right hand here to support you on your right knee or thigh. And then when you're ready, inhale tall, take the left arm up, but try not to lift the shoulder up towards the ear. Exhale, sliding down your armpit to hip. It's not a holding over, bending over rather, it's more a, a contraction. Inhale back up to the top, just a tiny movement, the first one. Exhale at the top. Inhale, lift up through the left side body, make some space. And then exhale over towards your right again, contracting that armpit to hip feeling. Inhale back up to the top. Try and keep the left uh, hip bone grounded as well. Exhale at the top. Inhale, we're going to hold this time. Inhale long on both sides. Exhale over to your right to where you're comfortable. Hold and breathe. Keep that tummy engaged. Keep that top shoulder rolled back and open so that it's not falling forwards. 
See if you can reach a little further with your middle finger. I'm breathing. And then inhale, come back up to the top, release the arm down. Over to the other side, so swap your support to your left hand on your left thigh. Inhale, reach up and through that right side this time. Exhale, just a gentle movement, armpit to hip. Don't go fully over the first time. Inhale back up to the top. Again, you might find one side easier than the other. Exhale there. Inhale, find that length again, draw in through the tummy. Exhale, armpit to hip, slides down as the right side of your body opens up in a nice gentle curve. Inhale, back up to the top. We're going to stop the next time over there and hold. Inhale, tall, find that space to move the spine over to the side. Exhale, over, keep that right hip glued down to the floor as well. Hold here and breathe. Think about rolling that top shoulder back a little bit and opening the chest. Think about reaching the middle finger a little bit more. Think about drawing that right sit bone down to the, to the floor again. Inhale, draw the arm back up to the top. And exhale, the right arm down. Eyes closed, notice the difference in your side bodies, notice the difference in the shoulders. Each time you do this, however familiar it is, it still works, so that's the beauty of it. So, we're going to take the arms up now and go into cat and cow feeling, but beware not to go too far the first couple of times we do it. So it's just a gentle movement. As we reach the arms up, we'll be reaching the heart forward. As we take the arms down, we'll be rolling the heart through the back of the body. So it's really just the upper area that we're thinking of working here. So inhale, take your arms above your head. Exhale there. As you inhale the next time, draw your shoulder blades together, move your heart forward and reach out upwards and outwards towards that top corner. And then exhale, take the heart backwards, tuck the tummy, tuck the chin, rolling forwards. Arms get a little bit heavy here, so you don't need to keep them above your head if it's too strong for you. Inhale, roll back through the spine, move from the sit bones. Feel that ripple effect as the front of the body opens. And we're gathering the shoulders together on the back of the body, moving the arms out of peripheral vision. And then draw the tummy in, draw the chin back, roll the heart backwards, moving down just as, as far as is comfortable, feeling the upper calf stretch really here. Inhale one more. We're going to hold at the top here. So rolling open until you feel that you're at your most comfortable in a kind of cow back, hold and breathe. So the arms get a little bit heavy here. So draw the shoulders back together. Draw the tummy in to support the lower back. Draw the heart up. Tuck the chin to hold that big heavy head. Draw the sit bones down a little bit more, making your spine really long. And then roll forward back into neutral. Let the hands come down. We'll take cat with the hands on the thighs here. So let your hands rest on your thighs now. So we're taking the counter pose to what we've just held. So we're tucking the chin, tucking the tummy, inhaling, and as you exhale, roll forward, moving again from your sit bones up. Think of moving and rolling from the sit bones. Only as far as is comfortable, use the hands to support. You're coming to your cat back this morning. Maybe you end up looking down at the floor a little bit, or maybe it's back towards yourself. Hold here and breathe. So now think of expanding across the shoulder blades on the back of your body rather than contracting. Find that space across the back of the body, across the back of the space between your ribs and your pelvis, across the lower back. Let your sit bones sink a little more into the floor. Feel the weight move downwards. Keep that chin tucked. Feel that big, long expanse at the back of your neck. And then as we move up now, we're going to gather the chin back to take the weight, the weight of the head, draw the tummy in and move up from your sit bones. So again, we're rolling up the way, just back into neutral. Take it easy, take it slowly, back up to the top and release. So this time we're going to take our left hand and we're going to put in a little bit of a twist, but a slightly different one. Put your left hand on the floor or on your thigh for support and for a little bit of leverage here. 
take your right hand and fold it back and pop it back. So we're taking it out to the side, back of the hands facing forward now, and just folding it behind us and tucking it in. So that will open up the front of this area of your shoulder, which in me is incredibly tight. I've come up onto my fingertips on the floor. We're going to inhale and find that length again in the spine. And as you exhale, we're going to roll back that right shoulder and twist towards the right. So you're letting the movement go right down through. So stop wherever there's a stoppage. Don't try and push through blockages here. Just hold that twist. At the, once you've got there, just hold and breathe. If you feel comfortable, let your chin just take your nose round to look over your shoulder because you know that's what your nose wants to do. So just opening up the twist a little bit further through the throat and neck. Draw the tummy in a little bit. See if that tummy can just rotate a little bit more. Keep the sit bones grounded. Keep that left hand as your support. And then exhale, roll back to the front. Very important in any of these movements not to go too far. You know your own body, you've got to judge it. Release that right arm down. You might feel it's a bit more spacious there now. Same thing other side. So right hand is your support. Left hand comes out, palm facing backwards. Fold your hand behind you, opens up that shoulder straight away. Engage all the, the helpful points, the tummy, the chin. Inhale tall, sitting on both sit bones still. Exhale, let yourself begin to rotate. Think to move from the sit bones if you can, rather than there being any point of view that stops. So rolling round from the sit bones rather than from the shoulder. Again, let your nose go backwards if it wants to until you're comfortable and hold and breathe. See if you can just take that shoulder and open a little bit more in front of the collarbones. Feel that space through your ribs and the twist right down into your belly. And then release, come back to the front. Let go of that arm, bring the arm down. You might think that was an unfamiliar one for us to do, but we actually did it the other day there when we were doing eagle um, cow face arms, doing this the other day. So we did that movement by folding the hand behind us. Okay, so we're going to move now off our bottoms, which may have got a bit stiff sitting there. So take yourself off, off that and come over into tabletop. Move my stuff here. Okay, so we're in tabletop. We're going to take that cat cow again in a different position now, but it's still the same thing. We're still moving from the sit bones as we ripple through. So find your alignment, first of all, and rotate your inner elbows forward, just to give yourself a little bit more strength in your lower arm there. Wrist, elbows, shoulders are in line. Fingers are facing forward, but it's the palms of the hands that we're really using here for the strength. Draw the tummy up, tuck the chin in, lengthen through the crown, lengthen through the sit bones. Knees are under hips and feet are going straight back. Okay, so that's our alignment now. So what about the shoulders? Draw the shoulders a little bit down through the back of your body and away from your ears. And move your heart slightly forwards if you can between your arms. Okay, so inhale here in neutral. Keep it all together. And then as you exhale, start at the sit bones and start to gather up that tummy area, gather up through the back of the heart, comes through the back of the body. Lift up, let the head roll, push gently into the feet and knees and hands. And then as you inhale from the tailbone, let everything start to roll through again. Moving and opening into cow. Pushing into the hands and knees at the other end again. Exhale, tucking from the tailbone. We're going into cat again, rolling through. And one more into cow. And then we're going to go into dynamic cat cow if you're comfortable doing that. So on your next exhale, rolling up, but taking the sit bones back towards the heels at the same time. So arms then extend. And then take the elbows to the floor as we breathe in and move into cow. So the heart draws almost along the floor and we roll up into cow. Exhale, take the hips back again. Lift that heart, let the head roll forward. Draw back, take the elbows down as you begin your inhale, moving from the tailbone back into cow, lifting yourself up, and then come back into neutral. 
sit back into child's pose now in the same position so you shouldn't have to move anything you just take your heels your hips back to your heels and then we're going to stay in extended child's pose because we're going to take a side bend here. So walking to the left, first of all, keep the head up, keep the chin engaged so that your head doesn't become too heavy. Walk over to your left and you find a nice big right side body stretch. Try and keep that right, right hip moving down towards your heel rather than letting it lift. But you'll extend the bend a little bit more into your hip and pelvis if you do that. And breathe, of course, don't forget the breath. And then walk the hands back to centre. You can keep your head up there or you can take it down if, it, if it's comfortable for you to do so. Walk over to the right, same thing on the other side. You can also hold your wrist if you want a bit more of an extension. Don't forget that back hip, so try and draw it back down. Head can be in the floor as I say, or you can use your arm as a bit of support here for the head if it's too heavy feeling. Just breathe, find that space coming between your ribs. So you can just rotate your ribs slightly so that you open up a little bit further round to the front of your body. So you're rolling your shoulder open backwards. Breathe into the space, breathe into the left side and then walk back to center. I think I'm getting my left and right wrong this morning, but you probably know more what you're doing than I do. And then come back up into Tabletop, walk your hands now round to your left. So we're doing a little bit of a twist, but in tabletop rather than child's pose. And if you're comfortable doing so, look back towards your foot, feet. Opening up the right side body. Head can get a bit heavy, so do remember to tuck the chin to support the back of the neck. Walk back to neutral and then over to the right. Same thing, keep the tummy engaged to support the lower back, remember. Look back towards your right foot if you're comfortable looking over your shoulder. Big stretch, the same stretch that we did at the beginning, you might be feeling in the side of your neck there. Come back to centre. We're going to keep our hips over the knees and come down into puppy pose now. So we all have done that one quite a lot last week. Keep the tummy engaged, keep the hip knee alignment, take the elbows down to the floor. And then walk the elbows a little bit further forward, just so that you feel you've got a long front and back body. And then take your head either down to the floor or take your hands, fold them in front of you and take your head onto the back of your hands, just to support it. If you've got your head to the floor, you might want to try and think about coming into a bit of a cow back here. It's the same feeling. So rolling the heart downwards. As I say, this is called melting heart in America. So it's you're thinking about moving the heart down towards the floor. It's a back bend. It's very much like cow, the feeling on your back. So keep the hips back over the, the knees. Make sure you haven't leant forward. Wherever you are, obviously just breathe. So in a back bend, we naturally gather the back of the body together. You may feel your shoulder blades coming towards each other there. And we need to support that curve in this cow back bend shape by lifting the tummy up a little bit closer to the spine, maybe drawing it up a little bit under the ribs. Big space across the lower back here as well. Really nice if you've got lower back issues. And then we're going to come back up to tabletop. Going to take our knees a little bit wider and take a thread the needle here, which we do a lot, so you're quite familiar with this one. So draw the tummy in again, find that neutral alignment here, but your knees are just a little bit wider than hip distance so that we can put the twist in. When you're ready, we're going to move into the right hand, we're going to take the left arm and open up into a nice slow twist up, up above us. And then we're going to fold down. If you're on the breath, this is the exhale. You're taking the arm under you, threading, threading the needle through, and then taking the head down to the floor onto the left ear. So you might then find that your hips have kicked over to the right. Draw them slightly back so they still feel that they're over your knees. I'm up and talking, but you should still be on the floor. So you might find then you've got that nice stretch through the left side of the neck where your head's on the floor. And get a nice stretch through the back of the left shoulder. So 
don't forget to use the tummy to support you. We're going to come back up by pressing into the right hand. We're going to put that twist in again at the top and open up in the other direction, counter posing. And then bring the hand to the floor. If at any point you need to take a rest or stretch out and wiggle your hands about, um, then please just sit back and wiggle your wrists. I'm going to take it on the other side now. Still same position, wider knees at the back. Find that nice neutral alignment. And then inhale and lift the right arm up, putting in that twist at the front, the upper back is moving here more. And then rotating and drawing down through and letting your right ear come to the floor. So again, think about where your hips are. Have they moved forward? Have they moved over to one side? Try and find that neutral alignment where your hips are sitting over your knees. And find your breath. Find that nice stretch through the other side of your neck now, through the shoulder on this side, opening across the back of the body. And then gather your breath together as you breathe in, press into the hand and the left hand and then open up that twist on the right side, bring the hand back to the floor. And then bring your knees a bit closer together again, sit back into child's pose. If you can bring your head to the floor, do so, otherwise you grab your cushion if you had one and pop your head to the floor. You can either keep your elbows here in front of you on the floor to support you, or you can take your hands and sweep them round your arms, sweep them round the back until your hands come down beside your feet. This puts a lot more pressure in through your head and neck. So if that's uncomfortable for you, keep your hands forward and keep your elbows on the floor. Um, if you've swept the arms back, as I say, there's a lot more pressure goes towards the head. Try and take your hips back again towards your heels if you feel that. If you're comfortable there, then turn your palms upwards so you're rotating so the backs of your hands are on the floor and your shoulders then will open more across the back of your body big back of body stretch this one really can feel the gravity pushing down on the back of the body here and stretching it open moving everything down towards the floor find your breath Feels a little bit claustrophobic on the front side, but remember you can breathe into the back of your body. We know how to use side, back and front of our bodies in yoga, so find where the space is and breathe. I can feel quite a lot of pressure on that third eye area here on your forehead. There'll be a nice flush of energy now as we move back up, so when you're Comfortable, bring your hands back forwards under your shoulders to roll yourself back up and then bring yourself down onto the floor and onto your back. So we're going to take a couple of bridge rolls here, just rolling up and down as much as is comfortable for you this morning, don't force it, bring your heels right in towards your bottom. About, about hip distance apart, so your feet should feel in line with your hip joints, roughly. And then find that little pelvic tilt, first of all, before we move. So draw the pubic bone and pelvic bones up towards your belly button. Just a tiny movement in the pelvis as, a, as we roll up and just find that pelvic tilt, that movement through the lower back. So as we inhale, we then exhale and pelvic tilt. And then on the next inhale, we press into the feet and start to roll up through to bridge. So all the way to then pouring back down towards your shoulders and the back of your head this time. Keep the head looking upwards. We don't move our head in this position. And then on your exhale, rolling back down, dropping the spine down one vertebrae at a time to find the mat. Inhale. As you inhale, lift up in that pelvic tilt this time. You know the movement now, so engage the pelvic tilt as you lift up, rolling up and opening up the front of the body. Maybe you can turn your palms down towards the floor so that you're not, uh, back to the hands rather, so that you're not actually using your hands as support. If you need them, then that's perfectly fine. But if not, try and open up your palms to the ceiling as you roll up and down. Opening up across the collarbones again and the front of the shoulders that we did earlier. 
tucks the shoulders under if you open your palms upwards. Take one more roll up, just in your own time. And then bring yourself back down to the floor. Take your feet to the width of the mat. And just put in a few little windscreen wipers here. So just let your body roll through. Don't need to take the legs right over to the floor, just to where that balance tipping point maybe is. But notice that nice movement through your belly area on this. Shoulders and upper body are really not doing an awful lot here. It's all movement from the lower part of your body. But do be careful because there are some very delicate areas in the lower back that you do not want to force through. So make sure you feel the weight of the legs at tipping point and draw them back. And then come back to neutral. Take your legs away from your straighten out now. We're going to come into Bananasana to find final, our final side bend here. So walk the feet over towards your left and then walk your shoulders over towards your left, keeping your middle half stable and neutral where it started. Um, you can cross feet if you want to do here, or you can take arms up above the head and catch wrists, or you can just let your elbows be soft here. It doesn't need to be stretched out. It's just about opening up that side body on the right hand side again. Maybe you can let your head roll a little bit so that the side, right side of the neck opens still. Feel that space right down the side body. Maybe you can feel it go right down into your legs, even down to your ankles if you've got your feet crossed. And watch what the other side of the body is doing to let this happen, contracting. And then walk back over one part of your time into neutral and then over to the other side. Take Vananasana on the other side, find your curvy banana. <clears throat> Hands above the head. Elbows soft or a little bit more stretched out. Depends how much of a stretch you want this morning on your left side. And just be aware of which side felt a little tighter. It's usually your stronger side that feels the tension. So you might can find that. And this is my stronger side, definitely much tighter. And then walk back to center. And then finish with a nice stretch out. So reach out through your right side from the center point, from the space between your waist and at your waist rather, between your ribs and your pelvis. Think of stretching out from there. So moving down your leg and up your body rather than stretching from your heel and your middle finger. Hold and breathe. Let that space remain there while you breathe. And then that center point's where everything then gathers back towards. Take the left hand side, same thing. Find the center point and stretch from there outwards, downwards, upwards. Hold and breathe. And then let everything draw back to that center again. Sweep the arms down, let the legs widen a little bit, let the feet fall out, turn the palms upwards again, let the shoulders roll under the back of your body. Have a little rock from side to side across the back of your skull and just release anything that's built up in the back of your neck or around your throat. And then let your head settle. Find your breath again. Watch the breath, the familiar pattern of your breath without controlling it. Just notice where it's moving to, what it's doing, how it feels. It's usually a, a good reflector of how you are, your breath. Sometimes we have to take control of it to manipulate how we want to feel. So we may need to energize or we may need to calm ourselves using the breath. There's nothing much more familiar to us or comforting than knowing that you're breathing. <laughs> Feel the familiarity of your body as you lie here. We're about to finish. It's going to be with you all day, but just take a minute to notice it. Notice the familiarity of your feet 
a few legs of the front of your body, of the back of your body, the familiarity of your hands, of each finger that you don't take much notice of, but when you do, you realise, yep, yeah, they're mine. Each fingerprint completely individual to you. So we're going to move now to finish practice. If anybody wants to stay in Shavasana, then please do. Otherwise, have a little stretch or a rock and roll if you need to. We don't have time to lie in Shavasana really here. Otherwise, I'd be just getting you to do that all the time. But um, please do take Shavasana and lie longer if you ever have the luxury of the time to do it. We should make it the point that that is yoga rather than everything else that we've just done. So come back up to finish in Sukhasana, where we started, very familiar pose. So how was this class for everybody as we start the week? Do you find it satisfying enough when it's stuff that we do all the time, or is a part of you wanting to challenge yourself all the time? Something about familiarity is that, I wrote this lesson actually for COVID times, last year when we were all locked up and feeling a little bit <laughs> odd um, and it was about the comfort from familiarity but looking back to the familiar is really good for us when we're having hard times not that we particularly probably are now but some of us may be so it's good to remember that when you are having a harder time of it find your mat do what you know do what comes naturally and comfortably to you so hopefully everybody feels a little bit more ready for the week ahead. Thank you for your practice. Thank you for being with me here in France. One more day in France, then I drive back on Wednesday, so no class Wednesday evening. Um, but I'm, I might, well, the videos are there anyway for Wednesday from last week. Thank you everybody for being with me this morning and namaste.